Welcome to this week's Treasury Career Corner podcast, where I interview Treasury professionals about their Treasury careers. Each and every week, I talk to them about how they've built their careers, where they are now, where they see both themselves and the Treasury profession going to next. Let's get on with the show. In this week's show, joined by a long-term friend of mine, Mariana Polokrati, the Group Treasurer at Avramar. Avramar is a leading company in the food industry as the world's leading producer of high-quality Mediterranean fish and a number of other vertically integrated operations. So you've got brands, things like Seabream, Stone Bass, Seabass, a number of independent companies. But I'll get Mariana to explain that a little bit more. We've known each other for many years. We're going to go back to the dim, distant past. How you first discovered finance and then treasury we will literally go right back to the beginning of how you started and then go from there. So, Mariana, how did you start? Over to you. Oh, good evening, Mike. It's nice that uh, you're having me here in this podcast. I remember we have tried in the past again, but the circumstance was not ideal. So I'm very happy that we're having this opportunity today. I would say that I kind of popped into finance and treasury by luck, by mistake. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what I always had in mind is that you always have to open and have an open mind in order to investigate all the different paths that your life can take you to. So when I was in high school, I was fixated in becoming a, a doctor. So I was studying to enter the university as a doctor. I had a bit of not good luck at that time. So I went then to start doing psychology, just like switched a bit the major yep. uh, in, the, in the American College of Greece. So I started in psychology. So I was studying psychology for two years. Um, that was good because, you know, in treasury, at the end of the day, you really need to be able to talk to people and understand mm. the people. So I think this has helped me a lot in my background. But at the same time, I was taking some other majors as well. So I was taking business, management, marketing, accounting, finance. When I reached finance, I really enjoyed the classes. So after the second year, I switched into accounting and finance. In two years, I got my degree and I decided to pursue then my master's in corporate finance in the States. So I left Greece, which I am currently located well. So mm. I went to the States to start working uh, and studying on corporate finance. That was very challenging because, you know, at the time, universities in the States, I was maybe the youngest kids in the block there. I was like 23 and the, all the other one was like 35 with like experience, working experience. But it was good at the same time. I managed to have a lot of, uh, how can I say, they were giving me like mentors their experience. Yeah. So this is one of the lessons that I have always when you have the ability and the experience to help other people. I try to do that and I try a lot with the young people and the young treasurers as well that I have uh, around me. I came back to Greece to start working. At the time, it was the period when all the banks and the banking sector was booming. I found a, a very good position and a very challenging position at the time that was in one of the banking sectors that was a relationship manager in Eboriki. That was my first lesson in order how to understand and give credit to a company. Mm. That was really good, you know, because looking back, it really helps me today understand what the banks are thinking when they are trying to provide to a treasurer a credit facility. After four years, I had the opportunity within the bank to switch and go to a venture capital firm. As I say, I always like to have and see my options and see different paths of what I can see and what I can learn in my life mm. because learning and the educational part is very important for me, right? So I always want to keep learning something. I had the opportunity within the bank, so I switched to a subsidiary that was a venture capital, which that added uh, as well to my background, the ability to build business plans, to evaluate business plans and see how the companies structure all their financial statements. Mm. So have in the background of what the company needs for credit seeing what an investor sees in order to invest in a company, put equity. I decided to switch to the corporate side, which was, I think, the best move that I made in my life at mm. that point, because it was right prior to Lehman, like two years prior to the bank starting to collapse. Mm. So, yeah, I think that was pretty much how I ended up into finance and treasury. And it's an interesting one there, because a number of the guests we've had on the show previously like across, particularly I say the Nordics and some of the German region in particular, they do a similar thing. So they will go and work and get their apprenticeship and they, they get to know banks and know what the banking guys on the other side of the table 
want, need, and are looking for from a corporate. And then they start to say, oh, I'm really interested in what you're doing in Treasury. Can I sit on your side? Can I join you guys? Or, you know, they get said, oh, we've got a, a role coming up. So you, you did that side of things. But as you say, sort of you were going through what was a tough time in the markets. What happened with your Treasury career? How did it grow from there? Well, I joined in one of the largest Greek FMCG companies at that time that was Vivardia, which was, it came from a merger of five different companies in the food sector. I started as assistant group treasurer and within one year I jumped and I got the position as a, a captain, as they say, of the treasury being the group treasurer. That was a huge group that I undertook. We had like presence in more than 35 countries, operations in 60, a huge portfolio and a very diverse brand portfolio. At that time, I believe that it was very challenging because during my six years that I, that I stayed in Vivarte, we changed three times shareholders. As you can see, Treasury remained its position because I think, well, in generally, I think that Treasury is a position where people remain for many years in the same position because it's a job that requires a lot of trust. You know, you have to build a relationship and usually top management and the shareholders have a lot of expectations of the Treasurer and they rely at the end of the day. In Greece, you will see this in general, that there are treasurers in the treasury position that are more than 15 years in the same positions in companies. And when you say that, is that because, you know, there's, they want to hold on to those guys or what do you think the reason is? I think two things. In general, companies, I don't want to see the company's purse, you know, being exchanging hands, right? Mm -hmm. So they're keeping the cash into quite uh, solid and to have it in closed doors, the treasury and what the cash and the debt of the company is and not share this information right. open to all the other departments. Furthermore, usually treasurers in Greece are also the treasurers of, I don't know if this happens in many countries, of the main shareholders, you know, and because they're usually family-owned business. So the treasurer is also the treasurer of the family-owned business shareholder, right? So this builds builds a lot of trust. Usually we don't change positions that, that easily. Yeah. And I've heard of that with, it's interesting, there are some groups within UK, across the US as well, where, as you say, there might be a private group and you then become not just the treasurer of the company. Mm -hmm. I there's a couple of clients of ours that, and it was like, yes, you're going to do the, the company money and start doing the company money. And then once they get to know, know, like, and trust you, mm -hmm. then it's like, right. Now you're becoming the uh, treasurer for the family holdings as well. Now you're becoming the tree and you, you're sort of taken into inner circle. Once you get in that, it's sometimes difficult to leave, not, you know, in a, in a good way because you're trusted enough and, and you get rewarded. You know, because you become the, mm -hmm. the the family's banker as well. You know, you're looking after their cash and it, you invest yourself in it. So, yeah, it sounds very similar in, the, in that way. Mm, that is correct. The majority here in Greece, it was like family business. Yeah. Now it's changing. The landscape is changing, right? Yeah. After I left Vivarti and I went to Chipita, okay, Chipita was also quite, a, like, was the shareholders there for many years. So I remained in the position for the following nine years until we had the acquisition from uh, Modelez. I mean, this is a huge deal that happened in Greece. It was yeah. one of the largest deals. Can you just explain Vivarti, what did they do? What did Chipita now? You and I both know, because I've known Marianne okay. and listeners for many, many years. So okay. tell me about the two companies and so okay. listeners know a bit more. So Vivartia was a huge group that came as a merger of five different entities at that time. It was a $1 billion revenue company. We had a dairy division, a snack division, a frozen foods, fast food restaurants business. The good thing for me when I joined the team is that I was kind of, as I say, a UN person. I was not coming from any of the different businesses, so that made my role quite easy. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, when you have in mergers, what happens when companies merge, usually there are small rivals and competition between mm -hmm. the different people from different entities, right? Being a person that was neutral, coming outside of the businesses, of these four businesses, I managed to help all everything and help structure and build the treasury function at that time. I started in Vivarte, was a person of one, and I had one uh, assistant, group treasurer. We really did a lot of mergers and acquisitions. So I believe at that point, the fact that I had my venture capital background assisted me a lot in helping and jumping into different M&A cases that we had. Mm. Because we made, I think, during the six years, like four or five different acquisitions for a company in the US, a company in Bulgaria, in Cyprus. So we made a lot of acquisitions. 
And that's why I remember, I think one of the key points that I have somewhere in mind of one of my mentors is that the role does not define the person. Your abilities and the, the options that you provide define the role that you will have in the company. So mm-hmm. even though being the treasurer, I was involved in every m a transaction that was within the, the group. I think the skills also of a treasurer being so structured and organized is something that really assists on this, right? Furthermore, we have also the mind with a, having a financing transaction. So it is similar to a deal structure. We can also finance the acquisition and all the parameters to do the financing for the acquisition in the proper time with the proper means exactly as it needs to be in order to be smooth going. Okay. Mm-hmm. I stayed in Vivartia, which was an FMCG company, as I explained, until 2013. Then I jumped to one of the companies that was in Vivartia. So Chipita was one of the, is still, I would say, one of the largest bakery confectionery companies in Greece. It is a Greek multinational, as they, as we say. The main product is packaged croissants with factories in 10 different countries all around the globe and uh, commercial entities in more than 20 countries and products sold in 62. It was half a billion business. This was one of the entities that was in Vivartia, but was uh, sold due during the period that I was in Vivartia. Three years after it was sold, the CEO of the company asked me to join in order to assist further in the business development of Chipita. Chipita was opening new markets every two years, so it required a lot of financing in order to do this. But at the same time, it had many mature businesses and other entities, so you needed a treasurer that would be also a cash traffic controller in order to be bringing the cash and sending the cash wherever needed at the time needed. A very interesting period of my life. I stayed there for nine years with many different things doing, you know, from setting up treasury because there wasn't any treasury at that point there. I started by myself. I finished with two treasury specialists in the team up till the day that it was sold to Mondelez, which was a deal transaction that took for two years, which I was involved there as well. So further to doing the treasury business that we had, that was from cash management, debt restructurings, acquisitions, opening new markets, uh, FX transactions, because we had like more than 13 different currencies and exotic currencies as well. I was strongly involved in the process of the sale of the company to Mondelez, which was a two-year project. A special task that I had here was uh, handling the VDR of the company as well, which is very interesting because, you know, it is, as I say, the mindset of a treasurer is uh, being structured and organized, which helps a lot in doing like type of a project management, right? Very interesting. A lot of data information, you know, within the company and with the the external stakeholders until we reached the final closure. We closed the deal successfully in early 2022. Bring us up to date with sort of the months since then. I know, I know. You you know, this is a quiz show. This is what I'm doing. This is is my job. I've got to keep going. (laughs) <laughs> okay. So at the time I was on the less very interesting time because I managed, the truth is I never had the glimpse of a, how a multinational works and how it operates, how it is it creates an educational process, right? But as I say, I believe I was a bit too old in order to do this type of a project with Mondelez. And as I am a treasurer that has holistic view and I do an overview of everything, unfortunately, multinationals have blocks of treasury, right? So they have a, par- a department in one country that that is strictly on risk management, one that is in debt structuring, the other one that has to do with investments. If I was to jump on the vehicle of Mondelez and join them, I would be involved in only one small part of treasury, which is something that I really didn't want to do. And the truth is that the people in Mondelez, which I respect a lot, they had the same opinion for me because they thought that I'm very broad in this. So, I mean, it wouldn't be the best fit for both of us. What I did is I decided after we finished to have a sabbatical of six months, which is uh, very interesting because I never considered myself. I've been working since I was like 17 years old, right? I was studying going to college. I was working while I was going to college as well. So I managed to do something very interesting and stay for six months not working, but at the same time being involved in many different projects, like getting involved more deeply with the Hellenic Association of Treasurers, joining Think Tank, which is called the Boardroom, that uh, talks more and tries to educate women in order to be more capable and enter the boardrooms, right? I was also signed as an ambassador for GBBC, which is automation, right? Very important for me. GBC is Global Blockchain. 
yes. if it counts, wasn't it? So yeah, that's one of the things. So you're because I know that you love technology. Let's let's yep. just explore that for a moment. Let's use that as a, a springboard for that. Okay. Why is that so important? You you know, in automation, everyone wants to use a system and automation, but why are you so passionate about it? I have in in my career, I have set up three times treasury departments, right? Or restructuring a bit the current process and procedures of uh, treasury departments. What I see is a lot of people doing a lot of things manually. That is something that should stop, should the the companies and the people working in the company should stop doing Mm -hmm. because currently there are a lot of tools that can assist you in order how to to do things more automatically in order to be more strategic than an operational traditional treasure, right? So... Instead of, you know, just going in the morning and starting pulling out the bank statements, trying to find the bank positions, it is great to see that there are RPAs software, you know, robotic process software, that what you can do, you can set it, you can have it regulated. So in the morning, when you go up, everything pops in one folder and in one screen. Mm -hmm. So you have much more time strategically to think, what can I do with the cash that I have instead of trying to find what is the cash that I have, Mm -hmm. right? Automation, and, and, and it's growing fast, right? Because I still see people in companies in Greece that are doing manually this. They're doing manually the accounting entries for the bank movements. They are doing payments manually. So it's a lot of time that is wasted in doing things that are unnecessary to do today, right? And you can use this time to facilitate and do more strategic things. And the truth is that in Greece, treasury especially new ones, new treasures, are a bit difficult to find, right? So being able to do some things more automatically will allow you to have much more time and train people coming in for treasury as well. And throughout lockdown, did you see that was happening? Did you see people embracing that and did it help? Well, I think lockdown was a trigger point, I think, because everyone started being much more accustomed to doing things remotely, based much more on technology and things that they didn't do in the beginning, right? Because mm-hmm. everyone started saying, okay, let's let's work with DocuSign. Previously, you mm-hmm. said, okay, I have to go to the bank, sign the contracts, the two legal representatives or whoever is being appointed, do paperwork, sign all the copies and everything. And now during the lockdown, we had the DocuSign and we started changing the processes, the policies and the procedure in order to harmonize this with all the new developments. Mm-hmm. So you could have, you didn't have to be at the office to have everything signed or to make even the payment transfer orders when you need it in some cases. As you say, people were then using DocuSign and actually leveraging technology, but there's this passion for it. Where does that come from? The truth is, I never considered myself to be, you know, tech-oriented. You know, I was always thinking that I was doing the basics, but slowly, you know, with all the people Around my age, I'm not going to tell my age, but, you know, a bit as not so young people in the treasury profession, I was seeing that I had the ability to do more things. So as I see technology is growing, we have to take advantage of what it's doing. But at the same time, we have to be quite cautious and put a lot of policies and procedures in order not to miss the focus as well, right? Mm. It is nice talking about artificial intelligence, RPAs, robotics, chat GTP, everything. But the question is not using these tools just to use them. It is, first of all, to see what problems we have. So you have to do a forensics within your treasury. What problems I have, how can these be solved? And can new technology help us, right? Mm. Because I think everyone thinks it's like a trend and everything is trying to do it. You don't have to use it. Why? I mean, you can still use traditional things what you're using. But sometimes, you know, in order to save time and the resources that we have, because we're quite limited in the resources, automation is the only way to go. I, I'm not afraid, Mike, of technology. That That is one of the things. Yeah, I mean, because it. a lot of people are afraid that automation technology, they will lose their jobs. We just need to educate and train ourselves into different things at the mm. end of the day, which this is something that I have done during my whole career, right? Mm. I always tried. I didn't remain stagnant. The only thing I have that I, I really enjoy and I don't want to leave is treasury. I really don't want to leave out of this function. I don't know, for some reason, it's it's stuck on me, right? It's It has become another part of me. So I don't want to leave out of treasury because one of the questions that everyone has is like, in five years, what are you going to be? I mean, a lot of people say, you know, treasurers go and become CFOs. I say, why can't I be a treasurer doing different things? 
restructuring, setting up new treasury in different companies. Mm. Can't I, can't, I mean, with all the new things and the new developments. And so you've got this passion for technology, but bring us up to date with your current role. And then we'll talk about connecting people because that's something you do very, very well. And that's how, you know, we've been connected for many years. So current position, bring, bring us up to date. I did this six month sabbatical. I kind of took a break. The truth is I was working all day doing different things. And in April 23, I had a very interesting proposal from Avramar, which is, uh, as you said, one of the largest aquaculture companies in Greece. Hmm. So it is in the food business, which I really enjoy and I find really interesting. It is a FMCG. And it has also a global position. It has presence in Greece. It has presence in Spain. 80% is in Greece and 20% is in Spain. I have the group function, so I am on top of both groups overviewing the cash. And the truth is, I had no idea of aquaculture prior to joining. So, you know, this is one of the nice things that a treasurer, you don't have to know 100% the business because pretty much what we do we can apply in different sectors. We just need to pay attention to the specifics that impact cash flow, cash management, the debt management in every new sector that we join. Mm. So aquaculture is very interesting, but it has globally, it is in, in a difficult position. In general, there is a lot of turmoil in the aquaculture business. Mm. I was called, this is a group that came from the merger again. So I'm starting to believe they're calling me whenever they're having a merger. <laughs> the lady. Try... Yeah, I'm the, such a person. To try and connect all the people within the organization. So I joined and this was a mix of, I think, 10 to 15 different aquaculture farms. So there were people in the business and they were still thinking a bit in treasury. This is what we did in our company. This is what we did in the other one. So one of the key challenges was I had a treasury team of 10 people in Greece and four in Spain. So in Greece, I had to try and get, have these people aligned with one target and then that this is one treasury team. We manage cash unilaterally and we don't have all this difference. So, so we had two big challenges. This is the first one to help the people and have them all joined uh, under one brand name. The second one was due to the mergers of many, many companies at all times, there needed a lot of house cleaning in all the bank account management. So I came and there were numerous of bank accounts within the same bank because it came from all the different entities from the past. So it's not easy, you know, trying to clean up 150 bank accounts, bringing them up to 10, right? Furthermore, as this has came, this was from a restructuring from the banks. You understand this comes from a lot of different, the, the owners of this company in the past were the banks. So mm. this was one of the structuring projects that was in 2019. So still it needs a lot of work regarding the debt structure that it has. Currently we are in discussions with the banks and restructuring because as I say in my career, I have never repaid a bank loan till its end. You usually refinance, you have like five-year bonds. After the third year, you refinance it with a new one. Mm. Pretty much here was kind of the same thing, right? Because it was like a 10-year bond and there were like four years the company has passed. The business plan has changed from the beginning. So at one point within the next year, I believe we will start restructuring the debt in Greece as well. So you've been at a really, really challenging time. But I know throughout that, you've, you and I have talked a lot about people. You know, you're a great people connector, both internally so that's where i was going to go with that one because it's about you're a very good internal networker and connector of people but you've also got very much involved with the hellenic association of these could you you know maybe talk through those a little bit having an association i will tell you it is something that was in in my mind like in 2008 there was a group of treasurers in greece which we wanted to do this and start an association and talk about our problems and do all these things. But 2008, don't forget, it was the Lehman crisis and the coll collapse of the banks. So at that time, while we were thinking, we had different priorities, right? So we had very tough, tough and difficult times at the time. So we left the association on, on the side. In 2021, I was approached by a young group of five Greek treasurers that resided in the Netherlands. And they were talking about building an association of treasurers in Greece. And 
the truth is that they didn't need to talk to me more than 10 seconds for me to jump and say, yes, guys, you know, I'll join you. And of course, and we will try and we will build that and bring it up to any speed. Mm-hmm. The unique characteristic of the Hellenic Association is that it's, it's a hybrid form. I mean, we have Greek treasurers from Greece. I think today we're approximately 200 members out of which 75, 70 to 75% reside in Greece. So they are Greek treasurer working in either multinationals or Greek corporates. And 25 to 30% are Greeks that reside outside of Greece. So we have Greeks that are treasurers in the UK, in the US, in Switzerland, Netherlands, Cyprus, uh, Dubai, in any region you can imagine. And so um, it is very interesting because we started at that February, I think, 21, very small, having our first summit 21 with 60 members joining. 22, we reached approximately, I think, 110, 120 members. And in 23, we have reached a very good number of 200 members, which is really fascinating, right? And extraordinary compared to what what we hear from the other associations all around Europe. In the beginning, I was in a lot of the committees, you know, in the PR and communications committee, reaching out to all the treasurers in Greece and you know, just convincing them to join. It wasn't very difficult though, right? Because I think everyone was uh, searching and trying to find out more about treasury and be able to speak to someone the same language that they speak. Why? Because I believe treasurers in their companies are a bit like a an exotic animal, right? It's, uh, sometimes we talk about things and nobody understands what we're talking about. You say, I say, okay, guys, I have this derivative that I want to see. Let's see the mark to market value. And they look at you and say, Mariana, what are you talking about? What is a derivative, right? <laughs> so it was very interesting because I, I think we have grown and we have grown quite well between amongst ourselves. We know each other. We have formed uh, working groups. We have split treasury into the different functions. So we have a corporate sustainable finance working group, a cash management and treasury infrastructure structure working group, bank treasury, because we have treasury from banks as well, risk management working group. So we have split a bit the function of the, of the treasury into separate themes. And what we do is we meet twice a month and we have like brainstorming sessions. Uh, we call residents in order to find, you know, different things, how we can improve ourselves or different solutions that we can have. And in general, we have very nice networking events as well, right? In order to join and do much more things. It's amazing the work you've done. And I know over the years, you know, we've connected and we're talking about doing some other things with you guys. I think it's just, it's just fabulous to see it growing and, uh, you know, developing and everything else. So just going back a stage, why is that such a passion for you? I mean, you just talked about the practicality of some of it there, but why is this such a big thing for you? The association. Yeah, the association stroke connections. Why is that for you such a, a big thing? I think I was very fortunate in my life and I had very good mentors and people that have supported me in all the different aspects of my business career. I feel a bit that I can give back some of this. Hmm. So with connecting people, it doesn't cost anything, right? When you connect and you make a small talk and see, because people can assist each other, right? You can have something that you're very interested in finding about. And I say, you know, I met a guy at that conference, right? And he was an expert in this. Why don't you talk to him? And then it goes around, right? I mean, we have so much knowledge. It's nice to share it. Because as I say, I had the privilege of working with people that shared a lot of their knowledge. So I really feel fascinated when doing the same. Fabulous. So we're coming towards the end of the show, as we do each and every week, we wrap up with your takeaways for people. So we'll put your LinkedIn details in the show notes so people can connect to you. And you'd be lucky to have Mariana in your circle, in your network, because uh, she's a lovely lady and everything else. What what, what are we going to take away? What are we going to give these people that you've given great value already, but what are the final takeaways you're going to do on today's show? Uh, Well, the first one is that there is, as I say, there's not only one way to find the solution to a problem, right? So there's not only one path that you can take. There are always side paths and it's worth, you know, taking the time to investigate these as well. This mindset have helped me a lot in problem solving that there's not only, you know, one way to take a to find a solution to problem. You can go around, you can go on the side, you can investigate different things. As I said, Passing knowledge around, it's not something that really doesn't cost. I mean, you cannot be an expert to anything 
I have heard sometimes that said it is not who what you know, but it is whom you know at one point. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a capacity to know so much things. I mean, sometimes you have to have experts, you know, assisting and doing further and more and more analytical things that you can do, right? Another one I would say is don't let the role define you as a person. I mean, it's not treasury, it's this, this, one, two, three, right? Treasury can also go to different grounds, right? You can go in different sides, as I say, you can go in m a you can assist in project finance. I mean, half of my day I spend with lawyers and legal, so <laughs> ESG, Wow, this is something that I didn't talk about today, but treasures are quite good in ESG and sustainability. We were the first that were, you know, in these questionnaires coming to us when you with ESG as the company, with the banks calling us. So you can be the treasurer, but apparently you can do a lot of different things, Hmm. right? So I guess these are the the takeaways. I, I believe you have to be open to the different challenges, right? Keep an open mind into different things and solutions. Automation is a solution of the future. People need to be educated for this as well. And we can start doing it now in order not to be obsolete future, right? It's yeah. fast growing. It's developing very fast. We will have changes in the next three years that we haven't seen the last 20. As I say, we'll put your LinkedIn details in the show notes. I can't wait to see you further throughout the year and into next year. And it, you've just been amazing today. So thank you. I was glad to finally get you on the air. Thank you. Hello, Treasury professionals. Before you dive into the next episode, could you please help me continue to grow the world's only global Treasury salary survey? That's right, our one. We run the results quarterly, so you know your compensation is constantly benchmarked against the market and your peer group each and every three months. It's amazing, isn't it? Just go to treasurysalary.com. Takes less than two minutes to complete, start to finish. You then gain exclusive, regular, updated access to our salary survey, keeping you ahead of the curve. The survey is an evolving, breathing entity that constantly tracks the salaries of treasury professionals on a global basis. Currently, we have over 1,100 participants taking part. By the end of 2023, I want to hit 1,500, but that's where I need your help. Please make it happen at treasurysalary.com. Thank you for being such amazing loyal listeners. Your support is incredible. Couldn't do it without you. Thank you. Go to treasurysalary.com. Make it 1500 for 2023. Love you guys.